Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm working today with my colleague Louise Croft. So what we're doing, this is a session specifically aimed at parents and what we're going to be talking about is what the post 16 options are for your your children and we're going to be using a website called Career Pilot. That is careerpilot.org.uk and we'll mention some key parts of it that might be useful to you to look at with your child. So we're going to talk about the different pathways available at 16 and we'll show you where to go for all the information that we're talking about and then we'll talk about what the students need to consider when making decisions but also how you can help them to make an informed decision. All the information we're talking about tonight is all on Career Pilot, so that's an open access website so you can look at that with your child. They can actually sign in and get access to the career tools and that enables them to think about the things they're particularly interested in and create their personal report. They might have done things already through school, so you could have a little chat about the things they've got already on their careers report. Got lots of things in Career Pilot, including what we call our popular tools. So lots of information. If you click on, on, on information, there's lots of things there jobs and job sectors, over 900 job profiles telling you about jobs. You can search for a course or apprenticeship vacancy, find a provider near to where you live. You can look at a qualification ladder so students can plot their route up through the qualification ladder. There's over a thousand video stories in the site all linked into qualifications and jobs. And then what we have is uh, our three stage process. So this is a process the students could keep returning to whenever they have to make a career decision. So it starts with them, their skills, their motivations, their interests, explore their options to find out in detail what's available and then plan their next steps. But they might already have a qualification in mind and if they do they can click on a qualification. There's lots of advice and support about how to make a good quality decision. So behind Career Pilot, we're all careers advisors and some of us are ex-teachers as well. And we're very passionate about making sure young people get the right information and of course for their parents too. So that's the web address, just to remind you, careerpilot.org.uk. So just think about the year 11 students that we're talking about today. What does the future look like for those students? Well, as we know, there are jobs that are going like library services might be changing quite dramatically and some other sort of administration jobs and lots of things are changing and moving as we have new technology. But that means there's also lots of jobs coming into that space. Artificial intelligence is growing quite significantly, low, uh, low carbon and green jobs as well. And what some recent research has shown is that if you're born after 20 or two, which many of our students in schools will be, then that you potentially will live until you're 100, maybe longer, and you'll have maybe 10 different jobs um, in your lifetime. So what that means is that you know, young people need to be able to think about what they offer, how they port their skills into different job opportunities. So where are the jobs likely to be in the UK? Well, there's uh, through the coronavirus, as you can imagine, there's lots of help, jobs in medical, health, science and care. Also, lots of jobs to do with IT, digital, data, web design, statisticians, data analysis, all these jobs are growing too. Things to do with engineering and construction, lots of construction jobs have kept going through the COVID crisis, uh, but lots of jobs will be expanded in that area um, as we look to create more housing or resources for people. There's also lots of jobs in environment low carbon, we talked about the, the green rebuilding after COVID, uh, so it might well be there's lots of jobs to do with uh, waste management, flood management, recycling, all the things we hear about on the news. But just bear in mind that we do still need people in the construction trades, hair and beauty, how many of us wanted our haircut after lockdown, childcare, motor vehicle servicing, which might be electric cars rather than petrol or diesel. So we still need all those jobs that have been around for, for quite some time, but those are the main sectors that are going to grow in the future. So to help young people understand about their future career, we have a little video that uh, we show, which is an animated video. And what we're trying to get across is that young people are in charge of their careers and they're going to navigate their careers for the future. But we're all here to help. 
So career pilot, user pilot, and us as careers advisors. So in our video, which I'll show you how you can see it in a minute, we've got four key points for young people. Know yourself, and these are a bit like our website. Do stuff to build your CV, know all your options, and then use your supporters. And if you'd like to see our little video, it lasts for about three minutes, and Louise has done the voiceover, um, you can watch it here just on the homepage. So I'm just going to run you through some of the things we say to young people about these different stages of planning your career, making good quality decisions. So in terms of know yourself in career pilot, we've got a whole section which is about young people learning about themselves and what motivates them. So we've got quizzes to help them get started so they can look at the things they might want to do in a job and get ideas about job sectors. They can start with a subject and see where it might lead. They could do our skills map and find out about their skills and they could plan their qualifications. So to show you a few of those things now, because these could be things you could talk to your young person about and actually do with them if they haven't done already. So under quizzes to get started, our job sector quiz has pictures of things you could do in a work situation. They can take as many of, the, of, of them as they like, things that they would like to do in work. And then it'll give them some suggested job sectors to look at in a bit more detail so they can explore the best match, the second best match, the third, third best match, or get a real idea of the sort of jobs that are available in those sectors. They could do a skills map. So this is to help young people recognise a lot of things they've been doing in their life have given them skills. So first of all, ask them what they've done. So it might be a hobby or an interest or some achievement. They could tick whatever they've done already. And for each thing they tick, we tell them what skills that activity has probably given them. So if I've kept, I've kept going with a hobby or sport after school, then that means they've probably developed some resilience and ability to stay pos positive and flexible and keep going. So what they get then is our skills profile that shows all the skills and then any examples that come from the quiz. And the idea is they add their own examples. So it could be something they've done at home, like babysitting or being part of a team for sport, anything really. And they can identify what it is, think about the skills it's given them, say whether it was in school or out of school, and they'll all be put into their skills bank. They can also think of a job they're already interested in, nurse, doctor, plumber, whatever it might be, and see how their skills compare to the job. So they can see the skills required for the job and also their own skills alongside it. Start with the subject could be another way to help them make a decision about the future. So if they've got a subject they're particularly passionate about, they could click on that subject and then they'll get ideas of jobs or university courses or apprenticeships or college courses too. So it's a good way to just get some ideas. So in terms of doing stuff, then obviously for students in year 11, doing their GCSEs is really important, maybe the number one priority. But our message is to keep going with all the other things you're doing. You know, do work experience, even if it ends up being online. Volunteering is obviously another really good thing that builds your skills. Teaching yourself different digital skills. There's quite a lot of free courses at the moment or just develop a new hobby. So our message is don't drop any of these things. Keep them going because they look good on your CV and can actually show you as being different from somebody with the same GCSE results. So the third stage is knowing all your options and that's what we're going to focus on today. So I'm just going to pass across to Louise now who will run you through those. OK, so thank you, Sue. So um, what do your son or daughter need to consider when they're making um, a choice about their options. So obviously start with something positive. So it's good to have a chat with them about what they like and what they're good at, um, what subjects are they enjoying, um, you know, and maybe they want to continue with those or maybe they want to look at something new. The other thing to think about is how do they like to learn? Um, some students um, are quite happy in the classroom environment and they like being assessed by exams. Other students prefer to learn by doing and uh, maybe doing some work experience or um, project based work and they prefer a sort of continual assessment also worth checking as well if you've got a specific career in mind um, that um, you might need to do specific 
qualifications. So for, or they might just be helpful towards it. So for example, with veterinary and medicine, you have to do specific types of A-levels. Um, but for example, if you want to do animal management type call, um, say veterinary nursing, it would obviously be useful to maybe do an animal management course next. So we always say if you're not sure of the career, maybe start with a subject that you like and also check, as we said, about the learning and the assessment to make sure you're going to do well on the course. And then kind of focus maybe on the job a bit later on as, as you're sort of developing and getting to know more about yourself and what you're good at. But we want to reassure you that basically there are lots of different ways of getting into most jobs. OK, so. Um, I'm going to show you now the three main pathways that your son or daughter has got a choice between doing. So academic, which tends to be sort of A-level, vocational, which is um, mainly job related, and then work-based, which is the apprenticeship option. Um, and there are lots and lots of different levels. So um, no matter where you start or which route you go, you can work your way up the levels um, to get to um, a level six is actually a degree and you can get to that through three routes. So your son or daughter will currently either be working at a level one or a level two. So they'll either be looking at GCSEs grades one to three or GCSE, five GCSEs grade four to nine. So if they're on for a level one, then they'll be looking at doing a level two course next, which could be GCSEs, but it's likely also to be something like a course at college, like a BTEC or an OCR level two course, or they might be looking at an apprenticeship at a level two, which would be called an intermediate apprenticeship. If your son or daughter's going to get five GCSEs four to nine this year, they're able to look at level three qualifications next. So that could potentially be A levels in a sixth form, or it could be a BTEC level three in a college or a sixth form, or an advanced apprenticeship. And as you can see from there, you can work up to a level four, which would be a degree or a higher apprenticeship, to level five, to a level six. So um, often students go not necessarily in a straight line, but may go from GCSEs to a BTEC to a higher apprenticeship um, to a degree. So um, you don't necessarily have to go in a straight line. And the great thing is, is that you can work your way up from whichever level you start at. OK, the levels we're looking at tonight are one, two and three predominantly. OK, so we've got a bit of a quiz here uh, in our virtual world, um, just looking at the different routes. Um, quite a lot of changes have come about recently and you can get into lots of different careers now, as I said, through lots, lots of different routes. So um, nursing, um, that used to be a situation where you could only get in through, in the olden days, it was through an apprenticeship, then it became a degree. And guess what? Now you can get in through a degree and an apprenticeship route. Um, also with dentistry, um, that's still very much focused on the academic route. So you need specific A-levels and you need to get a degree to become a dentist. But then solicitor, which up until now has always been just the old degree at university route, that's recently been opened up to allow people to go through the apprenticeship pathway. So you can see there's quite a lot of change happening in terms of careers and routes in. If you want to see some of these um, new apprenticeships, there are over 250 types of apprenticeships now, apprenticeship standards, and so many of them are in professional areas. For example, things like nuclear engineering, and as we've seen, law and medical. Um, you can take a look on Career Pilot and, and have a look through them, and um, I'm sure that there'll be something um, that your, your son or daughter may be interested in. Um, the important thing to know is that apprenticeships can be competitive. Um, so it's not like just applying for sixth form or college. There can be lots of people applying. So always have a backup plan because anyone of any age can apply for an apprenticeship. So uh, if you fancy a career change yourself, it's not too late um, and you can apply for an apprenticeship yourself, as many people do. The other thing that in companies sometimes use apprenticeships for is upskilling their existing staff. So it's worth knowing that because sometimes it can be worth getting into an organisation. Um, so you've got an opportunity to do an apprenticeship a bit further down the line. 
OK, so let's have a look at the options in more detail then that are open to your son and daughter. Um, one option is for them to take a vocational course. So this is courses that are about a particular job area. So this will be new for your son or daughter because they probably haven't done so much of this up till now. Um, there's over 30 different courses um, that are offered by our local further education co colleges. Um, and of course, they are sort of Wiltshire based at Trowbridge and Chippenham and Bath College. Um, and really, um, you can focus on two different sorts of areas. You, as I said, there are courses at every level. So you can start at um, entry level or level one or level two or level three, depending on your qualifications. Um, but there are different types of courses. So some courses are quite general. So, for example, you can do a BTEC course at level three, which is um, might be involved in business or health and social care, which could take you into a range of different areas. Or you could do a very, very specific course. So if you wanted um, to be a veterinary nurse or you wanted to be a hairdresser, you could focus in and learn all the practical skills that you need to go straight into that occupation. Um, and lots of people after those types of courses may go on to an apprenticeship. Lots of people doing the BTEC course, however, like A-levels maybe at school, would then carry on to university. So it does give you lots of options to go down this route. Um, and most of these courses are, there is some exams involved, but much less than the academic route. So they're much more assessed by um, practical work and coursework. Um, check out the open days, um, there's virtual open days for these, um, and they're all advertised online. Um, so we've also got something new happening around vocational courses too, a new a new um, qualification that's come about. You might have heard of BTEC and City and Guilds, but we've also got this one called T-Levels, which is short for technical levels. Um, and the government have introduced this. Um, really, it's, it's, coming, it's coming in over the next few years. Uh, and basically, this course is equivalent to three A-Levels. Um, and you would focus on a specific vocational area. Uh, and the main thing with this is that you would do over 45 days of work experience. So it would combine practical skills, technical skills, academic skills and work placements. Um, so it's meant to really give students a head start if they want to go into a higher apprenticeship. Um, but potentially they could also go on to university. You obviously have to know what subject you want to focus on. Um, but the ones that we've got that are being introduced this year um, are child care and education, digital production and construction. So have a look and check out what the local colleges are offering. There will be more potentially next year. Now, a very popular choice for young people is to stay on in school in their sixth form or go to another sixth form or sixth form college. And sixth forms tend to offer more academic traditional qualifications such as A-levels, you might have heard of those, AS-levels, extended project qualifications and vocational qualifications. Um, also, as part of that programme of study in the sixth form, you normally need to be doing things like work experience, volunteering, Duke of Edinburgh or sports leaders, something like that alongside. So let's have a look at this in a bit more detail then to see what you could be doing. So in terms of A levels, most people normally take three subjects. Uh, sometimes if you're a high achieving student, you might be invited to take four, um, but it's because they're usually quite a step up from GCSEs. We usually say that it's a good idea maybe to focus on three and get better grades in them than spread yourself a bit thin. The entry requirements do vary quite considerably from school to school. So the only way to check it out is to have a look online and they do all have open evenings, even if they're virtual ones. Usually they have um, deadlines as well that you have to meet. So it's worth checking out when they are so you can make an application. There's nothing to stop you applying for more than one sixth form and making a decision later on. Some schools will offer you the opportunity to do something called an extended project qualification which carries UCAS points so it can help you go to university and this is a usually a project of your choice where you get to focus on a subject that you're interested in and it could relate maybe to a degree or a career that you're interested in going into. So the minimum entry, entry requirements for A-levels tend to be five GCSEs, grade four and above, including English and maths. However, depending on what you then want to apply to do, so say for example you want to do maths, 
at um, sixth form, then they might say you need a grade seven in your maths GCSE and say you wanted to do one of the new subjects that may be open, open to you like psychology because it's a science based subject. They may say you need a grade five or six in GCSE science. So it might not be enough just to have grade fours. Um, to do some of those A-level subjects, you will need some higher grades. Now, A-levels obviously tend to lead on to things like university, apprenticeship, and they can lead on to work. Um, obviously, um, it's really important to choose an A-level because you're doing three of them that you like and you're good at. So you can check out. Um, um, also, it's important to take the right type of subject for the degree that you might be interested in. So you can check that out at ucas.com. And if you're looking for some inspiration about where these subjects that you're thinking about doing could lead to, um, Sue showed you the start with the subject and to go on to Career Pilot um, and do a bit more research about those subjects. OK, so six forms have broadened out and a lot of them are now offering vocational qualifications too. So like the ones at college, but they tend to be um, like equivalent to one or two A levels rather than the three at college. And they may be called a BTEC, but they could also be called a Cambridge Technical or OCR qualification. Um, and what sometimes people do is they either take um, a couple of BTECs. So they might, for example, take double business and sports, or they might combine A-levels with a BTEC and say, for example, take health and social care BTEC alongside an A-level in psychology to give a, a good range. Um, and obviously, at the end of that, you can still apply for university or apprenticeships or jobs. OK, so apprenticeships. So we've touched on those a little bit and shown that actually there are a whole range of these. And as you can see, there are, they go, there are all lots of different levels, um, six levels, all the way up to degree apprenticeship. So if your son or daughter does do A levels, they may have your, they may choose to after they've done those to apply for a, a higher or a degree apprenticeship route um, and not necessarily go to university to pursue their career. But as you said, you could do them at any age. So if your son or daughter was to start an intermediate apprenticeship at the end of uh, year 11, um, they may be paid £153.55 a week. That's the minimum they could be paid. Um, and they would be working at least 30 hours a week, but they would have holidays and sick pay. Some employers do pay more. It just depends what kind of apprenticeship you're looking at doing. Obviously, apprenticeships are great if you're really practical and you like learning on the job. You like getting involved and working. And um, usually you may go to college one day a week or there may be some sort of block release where you're, you know, you're learning in a college environment. But the thing about apprenticeships is that it all depends on the economy to whether or not you can find one. So if there are lots of vacancies, then it can be really easy to find an apprenticeship. But sometimes it might not be so easy or you might live somewhere where there just aren't any opportunities for that and you might need to travel so um, because the um, coronavirus has you know had an impact on the economy um, it's always a good idea to have a plan b if you're thinking about an apprenticeship don't put your eggs in one basket also look at applying to college alongside that And oh, yes, and you might need to start at the same level as you're already studying um, because you haven't had any experience of the workplace. So even though you've got level two qualifications, you may need to do a level two to get some of the basic skills that you need before you can progress on. Um, and this is an example on career pilot. If, we've been talking about lots of different qualifications here. And if you want to find out more about what an A-level is or what a BTEC is, um, if you go to career pilot and go to our qualification section, it will take you to this ladder and you can see what level different qualifications are and also find out a bit more about them and where they can lead. So what are the things that you need to think about when choosing post-16 options? OK, so we said it was really important to have a chat with your son or daughter about what they enjoy and what they're good at and what they realistically want to carry on with. Um, and sometimes it can be really useful to speak to teachers as well um, and get their opinion and go to a range of open events to look at all the options. Well, whilst we might not be able to go in person, it's definitely a good idea to look at the virtual events that colleges and sixth forms are having. Um, the other thing it's worth um, iterating is that basically your free full time education only currently lasts until you're 19. 
So if your son or daughter tells you that they want to take a gap year at the end of year 11, um, maybe dissuade them because um, sometimes people do need those three years um, after year 11 to kind of find their way and try courses out and sometimes people change their mind and obviously you do have that option if you have three years um, you know you can try A levels and then if it didn't work you could go and do something else but if you take a year out then that wouldn't be available to you. Um, the other thing to say is apprenticeships are open to people of all ages so um, whilst education is only to 19 you know, sometimes it makes sense to do the education bit first, potentially, um, if and then go on to an apprenticeship. But it just depends what suits you and whether there are apprenticeships available and what you're interested in. The other thing is, is that sometimes to have a level three qualification, either BTEC or A level, can help you get into some apprenticeships because they require a level three academic qualification before you start them. So it's worth checking out that list of apprenticeships I told you about um, to make sure that you've got the entry requirements um, to, to progress into that. So what we're saying is, is make sure your son or daughter has a plan A, a plan B and a, probably a plan C, especially in this current climate. Um, and have a look at where these courses could lead in the future. Uh, and Career Pilot's got over 800 different job profiles on it. So you could have a look and see where um, these vocational courses or A-levels could lead to make sure you're sort of keeping your options open um, no matter what happens with the economy. OK, thanks, Louise, for giving us an outline of the different choices 16. Um, so just to remind you about the four stages of our video, the last one of which is use your supporters. So we're all part of that. All of us trying to support young people making decisions. So we've got parents, teachers uh, and career pilot courses there as well. And at John O'Gorn School, Amy Lynch is the careers advisor. That's her email there. And she's very happy for you to make contact with her if you've got a particular question around post 16 options or you're worried about anything. You can just get in touch with Amy at the school. So what else is there for to help you as parents on career pilot? Uh, the main site is there for you to access, but we also do have a parent zone which you can access from the top bar of the main website. And in the parent zone, you could look at choices 16 and there'll be some answers to questions that are maybe on your mind. You know, what are the choices? You can find a summary there. What's a further education college and courses do they offer? And what funding support is available for course at college? So hopefully you'll find an answer to a question that might uh, really help you to help your child make a good decision. So that's the end of the presentation this evening. Um, thank you so much for listening and good luck in helping your students make an informed decision about their next step.